everyone! Today's video is a creative portrait photo shoot behind the scenes and I'm going to be using the Tamron 70 to 180mm 2.8 lens. This is an FE mount lens for Sony bodies, so I also have the Sony a7 III which we'll be using to take photos with today. Today's model is Serena and Dan is behind the camera filming today's video and we are going to be taking some creative portraits out here on location. I'm also going to be giving you guys my first impressions and review of this lens and we are also going to do a bunch of comparisons so you can see some different focal lengths from this lens side by side, a bucket test and a whole bunch of other things. So I really hope you guys enjoy watching today's video and you find it helpful as well. We're gonna get started. <laughs> Whoa, that is like just your face in the frame. No way, really. That is crazy. <laughs> I think maybe we'll go to those fields over there. You could stand maybe here in the middle. Maybe facing this. Whoa. Well, that's a giant branch. I started off this photo shoot in a location in the middle of the fields, further away from the trees. You can see in some shots in the video how far away we were from the bigger trees and I loved how the telephoto focal length of this lens makes it almost look like it's bringing the background closer to your subject. I also love the creamy bokeh background we were getting in these shots as well. Oh, I like that over the shoulder. Did you want to try bringing your hands maybe up? Yeah, that's nice. I noticed pretty quickly that regardless of what focal length I was on, this lens was focusing flawlessly on the a7 III. It was super fast, it kept up with Serena's movement, she even has a bit of a fringe or bangs, however you like to call them, and even then the IAF was working great. Safe to say I was really impressed with the focus speed. Yeah, those were like close-ups. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and then could I also get you, you could either maybe sit or crouch yeah. in here. This location is so pretty, it looks so dreamy. Once I downloaded the photos and was able to have a flick through them on my computer, I found that focus accuracy was amazing as well. I love culling a photo shoot where the only thing I'm looking for is my model's expression and pose, rather than having to worry whether a photo is in focus or not. That looks so good. I was extra impressed actually at the focus ratio and speed for these shots while Serena was sitting in the grass. There was so much grass in between my subject and the lens and yet it focused without any issues. I especially love that one photo that I shared earlier with a blade of grass going over both of Serena's eyes and yet the photo was still tack sharp on her eyes. It's really nice with your hand up there. This lens is such a good all-rounder if you're a portrait photographer who loves to shoot on telephoto lenses such as the 85mm, 100mm or 135mm as you are able to get all those looks with just one zoom lens. A really nice portrait kit I think would actually be something like a 35, a 50mm and then this 70 to 180. As you guys might know, I tend to typically use wider lenses more often for my photo shoots such as a 35, as I love being able to capture the environment and the location that we're shooting in. I feel like I would be more inclined to use a telephoto focal length if I am able to zoom to capture some different close-ups with it, such as this lens. If you wanted to put your elbows on your knees and then you can bring your hands up to the top of your head. Yeah, beautiful. 
I'm sure you've noticed by now, but I decided to edit all these photos with my Lotus Lightroom preset pack. I was really enjoying this location while we were shooting there on the day, but when I opened them in Lightroom afterwards, I thought the green from the grass was looking just a bit too bright and distracting. So I basically got rid of it and made the fields appear more brown with Lotus. And I also really like the soft lower contrast look and the warm tones, kind of golden tones it adds to these photos. And then I was wondering, would you feel okay possibly? Why now? Yes. <laughs> Did you know that was coming? <laughs> um, if you could maybe lay with your, like your head here and your feet kind of off that way, you can come out the front of the reeds. And this will be again like a closer up. I'll lay down too. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. For my wedding photography, for example, this is a lens I would strongly think about getting as it would be nice to have a lighter camera bag with an 18 or a 24 millimeter for large group shots, 35 and 50 millimeter for my main shots, and then this lens for my tighter captures. Unlike the Tamron 35 to 150mm for Canon that I reviewed on my channel a few weeks back, which has a variable aperture of f2.8 to f4. This 70 to 180 has a fixed aperture of f2.8. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> oh my goodness. As a primarily prime lens photographer who shoots wide open, I did miss having that nice runoff in my portraits where the eyes and parts of the face attack sharp, then the skin slowly melts away with some bokeh. But at the same time, I did enjoy getting to shoot something a little bit different from my usual style with this lens, having pretty much the entire face in focus, even when you're zoomed in all the way at 180 millimeters. I love those. Okay. Things you do. I know. I'm always so dirty and like yeah. muddy and stuff after a shoot. So with this lens, you are able to capture a lot more details and texture in the skin, which is something I know a lot of photographers prefer in their portraits, as it can give your photos a cleaner, more professional, kind of like a classic look. Since this lens does have an aperture of 2.8, that is also another reason why I would be more inclined to use it for weddings. There would be a lot of opportunities to use it throughout the day and during the reception as well, where it's usually a lot darker. Paired with a camera like the Sony a7 III, which is great in low light situations, this lens would definitely be usable in lower light with a higher ISO, unlike the 35 to 150 with the variable aperture. Kind of headshot of your face here as well. And by the way, please don't forget to download my free photo editing app, Digital Film, which is for Android and iOS. I'll leave a link for it down in the description if you haven't had a chance to use it yet. So now I want to do a couple of comparisons between some of the focal lengths that this lens has to offer. The first thing I really want to do is take a close-up headshot of Serena at 70 mils, maybe 85, 100, 120 something, 135 and 180 as well. And I'll put them all side by side so we can see how the look changes depending on what focal length you choose. Now I'll go, I think that's about 85. <laughs> Perfect. Now we'll do 100 millimeters. And now we'll do like 120 between 100 and 135. And 135. Okay, now we're gonna do around 150. And last but not least, 180.
can I please get you to stand over here? So next up, we're gonna do the same thing again, but this time I wanna do it with a full body shot where Serena is filling the frame. So again, we're gonna start on the widest end, which is 70 millimeters, and then we'll go about 85, go 100, 120-ish, 135, 150-ish, and 180, where I have to be the furthest away from my subject to get a full body shot. Next up, I'm gonna take a photo on each of the focal lengths again, but this time both Serena and I will be standing in one spot. So we'll go start with the widest, which is a full body shot. So that's 70. Then we have about 85, which crops off the feet. Then we have 100, which crops off at the knees. And then 120 crops off at the thighs. 135 is like a mid-length close-up. And then we have 150, which is, again, a mid-length close-up, and 180. The last comparison that I wanna do is probably my favorite and the one that I wanna see the most is the bokeh. So I'm gonna be taking a mid-length portrait of Serena with lots of negative space at the top of the frame, again, at every single focal length, and we'll put them all side by side to see how much the bokeh changes from the widest to the most telephoto end of this lens. Okay, so we're at 70 first. Now we're gonna to go to 85. Now we're gonna do 100. And then 120, 135, and 180. Oh, that's some big bucket. So that is it for today's video. I had so much fun using this lens and I feel like it just gave me such a wide variety of focal lengths to work with for today's portrait photo shoot. So hopefully I got a little bit of everything to be able to show you guys. I would love to know down in the comments which ones were your favorite photos and also what you thought of this lens as well. In case you guys haven't watched it yet, I have a bunch of other behind the scene videos where I use Tamron lenses. So I'll link a few of my favorite ones below if you guys wanna watch that. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week so I will see you all next time. Bye!